We are in the BI Platform Studio and I'm speaking with uh, Susan Lane, Chief Technologist and Data Thought Leader at Quest Software. Um, so, um, Erwin has, a long, has been known very long for its uh, data modeling tools, of course. Mm -hmm. um, what's the vision behind expanding beyond just data modeling? Yes, so at, here at Erwin we have been a model first client or company and solution for a very long time, since the early 80s actually, yeah. best of breed solution for data modeling. And um, just in the last few years, we have expanded that portfolio to include a data intelligence environment, uh, which stands on a data catalog, uh, built-in data quality um, into the catalog itself, and then a, a data marketplace, which is a model-to-marketplace platform. Okay, and can you explain to us where would be where the user benefit lies? Yeah, it's all about data literacy. So really becoming quite wise about your data from everything from the application source system out to where the data shows up inside of the BI reporting environments. And then obviously uh, being able to reuse that and share it across the enterprise with your marketplace. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the seven-step approach to data maturity is an established urban methodology. Yes. Can you tell us, about, tell us a bit more about the seven-step approach? Uh, yes. So we definitely start with the modeling. So we're a model-first, model-led organization. Um, so you're always out there creating that blueprint of your new environment as you go along. Um, we've brought in use cases from all of our clients for each of the seven steps so that you're finding value early and often as you go through the seven steps. And that includes uh, modeling um, integrated with our data catalog. Uh, the catalog includes a lot of use cases around inventory of really understanding the underpinnings of your organization. Uh, moving on to governance and curation, so uh, marrying up the technical information to the business so you understand your data from a business context. And then the last three steps are quite new. So the last three steps are adding on to um, everything with data observation. So being able to scale out your data implementation with good, clean pipelines, knowing exactly where the data came from and exactly how the data is moving across the organization. And then scoring. Um, scoring gives you a classification of gold, silver, and bronze data. And then finally, marketplace, where the end users come in and shop, share, and compare data sets. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, You've been speaking at several AI conferences. You probably spoke at the Big Data London as well. Yes. Um, can you tell us uh, why specifically do you need DI for AI? Yes, um, a lot of reasons actually. I would say that some of the primary reasons are uh, having good clean pipelines going into your AI, being able to monitor and observe those pipelines on a regular basis. So what we know about AI is that there's always going to be a hallucination, mm -hmm. there's a lot of bias, and if you leave it up to the individuals of the organization, you're going to miss some things, and you want to have that hands-on interaction, monitoring, and um, scaling up your AI program with these pipelines of data. Okay, and moving on to data quality. Mm -hmm. With the growing need of improved data quality, um, can you tell us the benefit of having data quality embedded in your catalog? Right. So um, think of the catalog as a way to visualize your data. And when you're looking at things like data pipelines or data lineage, you're able to see where you have good and bad data, where that good and bad data is propagating, where that good and bad data is coming from. So you can get to root cause analysis immediately and see the changes throughout that pipeline. Um, and then the other key area with data quality inside of the catalog is that you're on a regular basis monitoring the data for data drift, which is something else that we know that the data does on a regular basis. So the data never stays, stands still. The data is always, always changing. And if it's not changing, then why are you using that data? There's probably no business need for that data. But um, it's always moving and you want to monitor it for when it goes outside of the threshold of integrity that you've set for that data. So um, being alerted to that and uh, the quality analyst is able to accept or reject those changes, so those anom anomalies when they happen, 
um, they can go into the technology itself and say, yes, I think that a spike in the data is okay here or it's not, and therefore training the data behind those AI models. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what has been your most significant disruption <laughs> in the past year with the Urban Solution? I would say the data marketplace. Oh, data marketplace. So for a couple of reasons. Um, the main reason, reason is end user adoption. So uh, I've been in this business for over 20 years now, and it's always a chore to have to explain to the business what a catalog does, what a metadata repository does, what data governance is, although they know it very well now. Um, so the marketplace brought the concept of shopping for data sets, shopping for data products, um, sharing them, collaborating on them, seeing them in gold, silver, and bronze data sets because of the scoring. And the other big disruption with the marketplace is that it's not just about the metadata anymore, it's about the data. So you can order up the data sets and bring the data sets back through a self-serve mechanism by requesting the data inside of the marketplace. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, in your opinion, what's some, what are some of the key strengths within the urban solution? Okay, so key strengths. So there's a lot of catalogs that are out there today, or several. It's really rare that we would go into a large organization and they have no solution for data governance or catalog. So some of the differences uh, with the Ir Irwin technology is A, that it has that modeling built into the platform. It has data quality built into the platform. Um, it's not just a search for data, it's interacting with the data. Um, and I would also say um, that we have extended capabilities through the Quest portfolio as mm -hmm. well, that provides you with some data uh, monitoring solutions, data integration solutions, and um, really uplifts that cell there. And um, we have one capability that our end users absolutely dig, and that's our mind map. Uh, the mind map is a dynamic 360 view of a data set or a data product or an AI model. So on one half of it, it gives you how the data is to be used, so the guidelines and the guardrails of how to use that data, and you can expand to whatever length you want to, all the way down to the policy or the business rule around that data set. And then on the other side of the sphere is all about where did the data come from? So being able to quickly understand how good or bad the data is and where it stemmed from, all the way down to an element level, if you so choose. Okay. I always like to end up to finalize with the roadmap. Yes. Um, what are some of the capabilities that you're excited about as a chief technologist yes. for the upcoming releases? Yes. Um, so before talking about AI, which is uh, yeah. probably what everybody's excited the most about, um, there are some things, the seven steps that I talked about. Uh, we are embedding our methodology into the solution so that you can see when you're working on a model what steps the data has already been processed uh, on. So you'll see, has it been modeled? Has, is there lineage? Has it been curated? Um, has it been scored yet? So uh, you're going to be able to see and certify that AI model that it's been through those seven steps. So um, metadata and data inside of the marketplace is going to get a lot more actionable. So it's going to prompt you when you have a lot of recursive relationships, when you have a lot of data bloat, um, when you have some new critical data elements that haven't been governed yet. So it's going to start to prompt you more and more mm -hmm. and become more actionable. And then finally, of course, with AI, um, we're looking at chat boxes and ways to make it easier on the end users to go in and um, ask for the type of data, um, at, um, become more literate on the data using those chat box technology. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds good. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for the interview, Sue. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure.